what we're going to be going through here is direct or variable costing here and that would be an inventory valuation method here that we use in our cost accounting. Now we have really four different inventory valuation methods here but we're going to be looking at the direct or variable costing method here. Some call it direct, some call it variable. So all those two terms here are interchangeable. And along with that inventory valuation method, we'll also touch on the input measurement basis that we'd be, where we'd be tracking our cost flows into and through this inventory account here for a direct variable uh, inventory method. And those would really be our actual, normal, and standard costing. Okay, so the first thing here, let's look at our direct variable costing. And what we're going to be looking at here is this is the case where you're going to be, de have to determine what's going into your inventory that's being capitalized versus what's being expensed here, uh, in this case when it's incurred here. So for direct variable costing, you're going to take all your direct material, your direct labor here, and your factory overhead, just the variable factory overhead is going to be going into the inventory account and it's going to be capitalized there. Now your factory overhead, the fixed portion in any selling and administrative expenses, both the variable and the fixed portions here, go into an expense account here and they're going to be expensed when they're incurred here. And when I'm talking about the selling and administrative expenses, I'm just lumping all those overhead uh, departments into them. It may be your engineering, research, what have you. Whatever it is, I'm just representing that as your selling and administrative uh, uh, costs here. Now, again, direct variable costing, We the difference is really with this factory overhead. Only the variable portion here, the factory overhead, is going to be in, going into your inventory account here and capitalized. The fixed portion of factory overhead is going to be expensed when it's incurred. So that's what we're talking about with direct variable costing. Okay, so the next thing, let's look at our cost flow here for direct or variable costing. And I've got it shown here. I've got the asset accounts here that we'll go through and then we end up at, with our expense accounts here. Okay, so starting here with our assets here for our variable factory cost. This would be a direct materials, direct labor, plus the variable factory overhead here. Those get accumulated and that's going to be our total variable manufacturing costs here. TVMC here. Now those flow into the work and process account here. Again as an asset account here. And this is where we would take our beginning work and process here. Add to it those total variable manufacturing costs that we have here. And then we would subtract from at the ending work and process. And that, it's, that's the amount of our work and process that's going to flow into our finished goods. So this is are taking the, those are the variable cost of goods manufactured here that we looked at. Now those flow into our another asset account here, our finished goods account. And this is where we take our beginning finished goods plus those vari var variable cost of goods manufactured that have come out of our work and process here. And then we would subtract from that our ending finished goods amount here. And that is going to give us our variable cost of goods manufactured here. Okay, so then we've take that variable goods of cost manufactured, and this is where it's going to be expensed here under a cost of goods sold here when those our products are being sold. So that's where uh, this is how we got to our cost of goods sold here as an expense. Now, with this uh, direct or variable costing, this is where we we look at the other our fixed costs here. Essentially, we take our fixed factory costs here plus any of those selling and administrative expenses here. Those get totaled together. Again, a fixed factory cost, add to it all the selling and administrative costs, and those flow into another expense account here, or their period costs here that get expensed. Okay, so that's our cost flow for direct or variable costing here. And just to summarize here, point one here, only the variable factory costs are charged to the inventory. That would be direct materials, direct labor, and variable factory overhead. Secondly here, beginning and ending inventories, the total manufacturing cost, that would be the cost of goods manufactured, and the cost of goods sold contain only the variable factory costs here. And thirdly here, our fixed factory costs are charged to expense during the period along with all of the selling and administrative costs. Okay, so that's what we looked up on our, our cost flow uh, diagram here. Okay. Now let's go and let's look at how we'd lay out our income statement here, format for, again, our direct variable costing. And it's really a seven-step process or seven steps that we go through. So I've got the to find 
those items we have to find here. And then I've got the equation showing here. So for our direct material that's used here, that would be our beginning of materials in our materials account here. Then we add to it any purchases of materials we made here. And BM here is beginning materials. PM here is uh, purchase materials for the period. And then we would subtract from it the ending materials here. EM is for the ending materials that we have in our accounts. So that's going to give us our direct materials that we've used here for the period. So for our manufacturing costs, we're going to take those direct materials that we used here, and then we'd add our direct labor plus our variable factory overhead here, and that's going to equal our total variable manufacturing costs. Okay, so now we take those our total variable manufacturing costs here and we can determine our cost of goods manufactured here. So we add uh, total goods of cost of goods manufactured, it would be this total variable manufacturing cost plus our beginning work in process minus our ending work in process equals our variable cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so now we take those variable goods of manufactured and we can determine our cost of goods sold. So we take our variable cost of goods manufactured, add to at the beginning finished goods, subtract from at the ending finished goods, and that's going to give us our variable cost of goods sold here. Now we can determine our manufacturing margin here. This is just where we take our sales dollars and then we would subtract from it our variable cost of goods sold here subtract from it the variable cost of goods sold and that's going to equal our manufacturing margin here. And then for our contribution margin that's just going to be taking our manufacturing margin here that we calculated and we subtract from it the variable sales and administrative expenses here. And that difference is going to give us our contribution margin. That's what we calculated here, our contribution margin. Now we take that contribution margin here and we can determine our income before taxes. That would be our contribution margin here that we calculated and we subtract from it the fixed factory overhead here and any fixed selling and administrative expenses. So that's going to give us our net income before taxes. Okay, so this is our income statement format here for direct or variable costing. And then one last thing that we want to look at here. Those are those alternative inventory costing inputs. That was those input measurement bases here. And this is where our costs are flowing into and through our inventory account. So we really had three of those. We had our actual costing here, our normal costing, and our standard costing. So really what we're going to be looking at here is the difference between those. So actual costing, all we're going to do and let's first understand what our manufacturing costs would be here. I've got them broken down be between your variable direct costs. Those would be like your uh, ver uh, direct materials and direct labor. And then you have your variable overhead, whatever variable overhead you have here. And then we would also have any fixed direct expenses or costs, whatever those would be here. And then we have our fixed overhead costs. So we're going to be looking at our variable here and our fixed overhead here as really a difference and how we look at this uh, direct or variable costing. So for our actual costing, we would just take some actual price here times some, or actual rate, depending what it is. Time, and I'm looking at it on a per unit basis here. So you take whatever actual price or you have your actual rate for any of those manufacturing costs that you look at it, and you take it times the actual quantity that you use for the period. So that would be your actual costing for each of those manufacturing costs here. And then for, look, at, look at standard costing here. That's going to be taking some standard price or rate for those manu your manufacturing costs here times some standard quantity allowed for each of those here. That's what would be standard costing. You've got some predetermined amount here for both your price and quantities that you used here. Now, this is normal costing is sort of a, we can look at, let's look at normal costing here. Again, it's, it's the same as actual costing when you're talking about your variable direct cost. That's just taking some actual price times some actual quantity used here. But And then it would be the same for your direct cost here, fixed direct cost. Both variable and fixed direct costs would be treated the same. It's just some actual price times some actual quantity that you used here. The difference is when you come through the variable overhead here, in your fixed overhead. This is where you're going to take a budgeted rate or in the case here standard costing a predetermined rate here but for normal costing this is where it varies from your actual costing here. You take some budgeted rate here times the actual quantity used for your variable overhead and fixed overhead here the same. You're going to take some budgeted rate here times the actual quantity that you've used here. 
So normal costing is very similar to actual costing except again for these variable overhead and your fixed overhead portion. You're taking some budgeted rate here times the actual quantity used. Normal costing uses the actual quantity used. Actual costing uses the actual quantity used. The only departure is your variable overhead here and your fixed overhead. It, normal costing is using some budgeted rate here versus actual costing using the actual rate. But for the variable direct and fixed direct, both are using the actual price times some actual quantity used. And then standard costing is different here because again it's using some uh, predetermined amount here for your rates and per standard rates and prices here and the standard quantity that's allowed here for each of those manufacturing costs. It's using some predetermined amount here. Okay so that'll cover our topic here um, with our director variable costing here and really how these how we handle this direct and variable costing when we talk about inventory valuation.